Welcome to the Site Plan webinar. My name is Nick, and I'll be doing the presentation for you today. Just like all of our webinars, this will be recorded, so you can go back and view this at a later date. And at the conclusion of the class, I will be sending out a PDF, which will cover everything that we've talked about today. So again, today's class is on site plans, and I'm just going to go over a quick lesson overview of what we're going to cover. So Envisioneer gives you the ability to add in your site boundaries to define the buildable area of your site. The topics that we're going to cover today are looking at the site boundary settings, inserting a site boundary, and then adjusting the site boundary edges. So the first thing we're going to look at is the site boundary settings. The site boundary settings determine the method of measurement and unit of, a of, a, of the measure used in your site boundary, as well as the appearance of the line, text, and pegs. To access this, we're going to select Settings, Document Settings, and we're then going to select the Site Boundaries option, and this will load all of the different settings available for the site boundaries. The first option we see in this list is the bearing format. So this is the reference angle method. So each angle is measured from the south, sorry, from the north or south meridian within a given quadrant, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. And with the angle bearing method, each angle is measured clockwise from the positive y-axis or the north meridian. So here you can see the different variables that you can use here. The distances area allows you to control the unit of measure. So if Imperial is selected, you can choose either feet and inches or inches to use for your site boundary distance measurements. You can select the unit of measure from the units drop down box. If you select metric, you can choose either meters, millimeters, or centimeters to use for your site boundary distance measurements. And again, you can select the unit of measure from the units drop-down box in that area. There's also a suppress units when you have the metric option selected. So this hides the units for the length distance in your site boundary. For example, 10 meters would just simply appear as a, as a number 10. So this is only going to be available in the metric option. If you're under Imperial, that will be grayed out. Next, we have a precision dropdown, and this is the level of precision in measurements. So, for example, uh, selecting the, if we were back into the metric, you can drop this down and select the uh, number sign dot number sign millimeters, which permits the use of a decimal when adding in your site boundary information. Over here, we have the angles option. And this is, allows you to adjust, uh, so the first option here is the units, and this allows you uh, to adjust the unit used to measure the angle of each site boundary edge. So you can choose either degrees, minutes, or seconds, or a decimal degrees. If your choice is degree, decimal degrees, you can select the desired level of precision from the adjacent uh, precision drop box. So again, if it's set to degrees, minutes, seconds, that precision will be locked. However, if you were to change that to decimal degrees, you can now adjust the actual precision for that decimal degrees. Next is the lines option. And this is going to allow you to use the drop down list here, and you can actually specify what the line style is going to be for the boundary line, the setback line, and the peg. The boundary line, this will allow you to select the color, line type, and line weight for the property lines, the outer site boundary line. The setback line, this allows you to select the color, line type, and line weight for the setback lines, which are the inner site boundary lines. And then the peg option, will allow you to control the color, line type, and line weight for the peg lines, which are the corner pegs. And you can change these all here by using this control panel and adjusting how you want that to look. So you can change the color, the line type, 
and the line weight for each of those options. Over here we have pegs and we have a round and a square option. The round option, when you select that, will show you a circle and then it will show you the crosshair through the actual center of the circle. When you have it set to square, it will be a square with a crosshair through the center of the square. This is just going to show you a representation of where those pegs are on your drawing, and this is just showing you how that can look. The width option will allow you to enter the desired size for the peg marker. This adjusts with the overall size of the actual symbol. Next, we have text. And under text, we have bearing length and peg. So when you click on bearing, you can click to select a text style for the bearing text on each segment. When you select length, again, you can select the text style that you want for the length of your uh, dimension. And the same with the peg. So here you can click to select a text style for the peg numbers. The distance from line option, this is the distance between the text and the site boundary line. This applies to all forms of text, your bearing, your length, and your peg text. Over here we have the include option checkboxes. If these are unchecked, the adjacent text type will not be included in the site boundary. So if you want to show these, make sure that these options are selected. If you're including a bearing and or a length, this lets you choose where the text will be located uh, in relation to the site boundary line. So choosing any of these options here will allow you to adjust where that bearing line is going to be adjusted. So right now we're saying bearing is going to be inside the line and our length is going to be outside the line. So again, you can control where you want those uh, text and dimensions to show up. So we're gonna leave everything as it is and I'm just gonna say okay. And I'm now gonna go in and we're gonna talk about inserting a site boundary. So a site boundary is a closed line that represents the extent of your property. The site boundary is annotated with your peg numbers, your bearing text, your length text, and the peg numbers themselves. To do this, we're gonna go in and we're going to zoom in on our actual plan. And I'm just gonna go up to insert and under terrain, you can select the site boundary option if you like to use the menus. If you are used to using the tabs, you can select the terrain tab and underneath the terrain tab, you will see a site boundaries button. Either one of those options will give you the cursor that looks like a little uh, surveying tool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify my first point. And I'm just gonna go down into the lower left-hand corner. I'm gonna click once. I'm gonna move my mouse up in my drawing area and I'm gonna type in 150 feet. I'm gonna hit enter. And that will add in my 150 foot length for my uh, property line. And I'm gonna move my mouse to the right and I'm gonna type in 100 feet and hit enter. And now I'm gonna move my mouse back down and I'm gonna type in 150 feet and press enter. I do not need to go back to my original start point. It is a closed polyline. So I can just simply right click and select finish. If I've made a mistake at any point in drawing these setback line, or sorry, these uh, property lines, I can click the step back button here and it will step back to the last point selected. And you can go all the way back to the very first point. I'm happy with where everything is. I'm just gonna left click and select finish and it will add in those points. So here you can see I've added in four points, so I have four corners, and I have some dimensions that show up along each line of that property. I can select the site boundary and I can move it if I want to move it into place a bit better, uh, so I can move it down a little bit further. I could also go in and adjust the actual size of the terrain if I wanted to as well. So if my site plan is bigger than my terrain, I can go to settings, document settings, terrain, and I can just increase 
the actual length of this, to say 200 feet, and it will make that terrain a bit bigger. So if the site plan is bigger than your terrain, just select the settings terrain option and you can adjust the actual size of your terrain. So now that I have my site boundary added in, I want to start adjusting the actual edges. And to do that, that's going to bring us to our next step, which is adjusting the site boundary edge. So under the site boundary edge dialog, you are able to add in your setback lines that allow you to define the building envelope, as well as adjust the measurements for your site. So I'm going to select this first line here. And when I select it, I'm going to get a blue grip that shows up. And that just lets me know that this is the edge that I am modifying. So if I double click on that, or if I simply right click and select properties, it will bring up the site boundary edge dialog. And in this site boundary edge dialog, I have a bunch of different options that I'm able to control. And the first option we see is segments. So under segment, we have length. The length is the sorry, the length of the current segment measured in your current drawing unit. So that is the one that I set to be 100 feet. So that's why we're seeing that 100 foot uh, measurement in there. We also have a setback option. So this is the offset of the setback line from the outer boundary line. This applies to the current segment only. And we'll come back to this in a minute. I just want to go through these dialogues, or sorry, these options in this dialog first. Underneath that, we have an arch radius. So you can enable this checkbox to curve the current segment. Then you can enter in the desired arc radius in the adjacent edit box. The arc radius is the distance from the lot line in its uncurved state to the top of the proposed arc. And then we have an arc direction. So if you are curving your current segment, selecting inside creates an arc towards the inside of your boundary, while selecting the outside pushes the arc towards the outside. So you have the option of curving that in or out, uh, depending on how you want that to look. Underneath that, we have the direction option. And under the direction option, we have the reference angle method. So this is the area this area is enabled if the reference angle method was used to create the site boundary, or if this is the method currently selected in your program settings. So here we're saying we're setting our bearing, which determines the quadrants that the angle of the current segment is being measured in. So northeast, northwest, southeast, or southwest. And then the actual angle of that line. So I drew mine perfectly straight up and down. Chances are that's not going to be the case when you're out in the real world environment. So in here is where you can actually type in the actual degrees, minutes, and seconds of your site. So this is where you can make those adjustments for those points. If you're using the angle bearing method, um, so this area is enabled if the angle bearing method was used to create the site boundary. And here we have a forward bearing and a back bearing. So the angle of the current segment is measured from the previous peg. Angles are measured clockwise from the positive y-axis or the north meridian. We also have a back bearing. This is the opposite of the forward bearing angle measured from the next peg. Then we have an when editing option. So when you have this set up, when you're editing this, it's going to tell you which peg you're going to adjust. So basically, it's just, just that. So when you are editing the length or direction of a segment, this moves the peg at the starting end of the segment. So this is saying that when I edit this line, it's going to move peg three. So it's going to adjust peg three to make that change for me. Or I could say, no, I want to move peg two and I want to keep peg three stationary. So this just gives you the ability to adjust how you want that to be uh, set up uh, when you're moving your edges or your pegs. We then have a clip terrain option. And this basically just clips the terrain to the size of the site boundary when viewing the model in your 3D view. 
And then we have settings. And down here we have the settings button. And when you select settings, this will just bring you back to the defined site boundaries. Uh, so you can actually adjust the settings in here, such as your line types, your dimension styles, and your peg markers. And I'm just going to cancel out of there. And I want to go back and talk about the setback lines. So when I'm adding in my setbacks, I can go in and make these adjustments. So if I know that from the back of my lot, I need to be at least 20 feet away from my property line, I can type in 20 feet. And what that will do is it will add in a new line for me saying that I can build up to that 20 foot line. Anything past that will violate code and I won't be able to get a permit to do what I need to do. And I can go around and do this for each side. So now if I select the right hand side here, I can go into the properties again and then type in a setback of 10 feet and say okay. And then select the front. And again, I'm just going to go around and select each edge. And this one will do 25 feet from the front of the house. And then on the left side, I will go in and add in another 10 foot setback line. So that will give me my actual setbacks. And then from there, I can go in and I can start adding in further detail if I want to. So I can go into tools, dimensions, and I can say linear dimension. And I can say that from this edge to this edge, I want to add in a 10 foot dimension string. So I know that that is 10 feet from that edge. And then from here to here, I'm going to add in another dimension string. Again, just giving it the notation so I know exactly where these lines are. So when I insert this into a working drawing sheet, I can actually see how that is going to look. And again, I'm just going to add those in. Right click, select finish. And then what I'm going to do is I want to go in and I want to adjust my actual site plan. So I'm going to go up to and I'm going to select the site plan tab. And on my title block, I'm going to insert that site plan. So I can go to Smart Views, Define Smart View. And I can insert this plan. So I'm going to turn off the terrain. I'm just going to go into the view filter. And under terrain, I'm just going to turn off the terrain. I don't want to see the big green square. I just want to see the actual site plan. And I'm going to go in and select insert. And that will insert that site plan. And I can place that into my drawing area. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than what I need. So I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to redo that, and I'm going to say insert, sorry, define smart view, and I'm going to adjust the actual size of that plan. So in here, I'm going to go in and select the 8 inch scale and say insert, and now it's a bit smaller, and I can now take that and I need to turn off the terrain again. So I'm going to go redefine. And under my view filter, I'm just going to turn off the terrain and say OK, and then update. And I can now see that plan view with all my dimensions. So here I can see the actual distance from my setback line to my property line so that I know that I'm within the scope of what is being permitted to me. So that pretty much takes care of everything I wanted to show you. So I'm just going to go over a quick overview of what we've covered today. So the site boundary tool will allow you to show where your design will fit within the lot you're working on. The site boundary settings will allow you to control how the site boundary will be displayed in your model. So again, if I go back to model, and I go to settings, document settings, and I select site boundaries, I'm able to step through each one of these options to control how that site boundary is going to look when it's inserted into my model. You can add in your site boundary by clicking the points to show the lot size, and then you can adjust the pegs as needed for each point. 
So as you add in your site boundary, you left click to specify your points. And then once you're ready, you can select the edge and open up the site boundary edge dialog. And once that site boundary dialog, edge dialog is open, you're able to add in your setback lines to show the extent of the building envelope and you can make adjustments to refine the site plan itself. So again, if we select an edge of our site plan, it will bring up the site boundary edge dialog. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the question and answer period. So if you have any questions about what we covered today, please feel free to go ahead and enter those in. Again, I will be sending out a PDF of what we've covered today. So you will be able to go back and try this on your own. And I will also be posting a video of our class as well. So I'll leave the question section open for a couple of minutes. So please go ahead, feel free to take advantage of this time together. And then I'll answer any questions that have come up about the uh, site plan. One thing I also want to point out as well, oh, we do have a question. Can you rotate a site plan after entering the distance and angle? You can, um, so if I add in this and I can, I can rotate this around and it will change those measurements for me. Uh, so here we're gonna see uh, we're at north 90 and west. So if I go edit, undo, as you can see here, it was southeast. So it will adjust depending on how you're rotating it. So the better option is once you define where your north arrow is, and by default, north is straight up and down in Envision here, unless you've made that uh, change under uh, your global settings, you can change where north is on your screen if you want to. Um, but for what I would suggest there is you can actually go in, add in the number of points that you need, and then use the actual edge properties to start defining the actual um, degrees, minutes, and seconds for that particular line. And what I was gonna say is you can actually go in and start manipulating the actual shape. So I can select the edge of this grip and it will actually move the pegs. And if I do that, it will also adjust the numbers as I move them. So it's all interactive. As I start moving things around, it will adjust uh, these variables for me as well. So again, I'll leave the question section open for a little bit longer. So please go ahead and enter in your questions. And as you can see, when I moved those actual grips as well, the site or the setback lines stay true. So they still stay 10 feet uh, from the edge and 20 feet from the back. That will always stay the same. So that doesn't change for you. You won't have to worry about re-entering those in. That will be a set value. Again, I'll leave the question section open for another minute. So again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and enter those in. If you do happen to have a question after the class has ended, you can contact our support department and they'll be able to help you out with any questions uh, that you may have about site boundaries as well.
right, well, that seems to be all the questions. I do want to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, please look out for an email that will have this PDF attached to it, so you can go back and visit this on your own time as well. But I want to thank everybody for attending, and I look forward to speaking with you all again very soon. Thank you very much, and have a great day.